All right, how's it going everybody? I hope you're doing well. Today we got a special video. The folks over at Fulton and Rourke sent me a couple of their products to do a review video on. Um, so we're gonna check those out. Uh, they're a niche company. They're relatively new, started maybe 10 or so years ago. Um, and they got some great stuff. Uh, I, I sort of looked through what they have on Fragrantica. Most of them have a Fragrantica page, except for the newer ones, of course, haven't been, uh, haven't been made yet. But what they sent me was uh, a solid fragrance for men, um, and then two uh, bars of their, their niche soaps. Uh, they have one called Sterling, and then one called Palmetto, so they sent me two of each of those. And then their solid fragrance that they have is uh, Limited Reserve number 15, also known as Mattia. So for those of you guys who aren't really familiar with Fulton & Rourke, um, their niche brand, uh, they do a whole lot of stuff like um, they do some shampoos and body washes and some soaps obviously and their main thing is they do uh, solid fragrances. So I know most of the time I've been reviewing the spray fragrances but what you guys got to remember is that spray fragrance is actually around 5% of the entire uh, the fragrance industry. So a lot of it is going into things like anywhere from uh, industrial detergents, uh, soaps, candles, stuff like that. Um, it really, any sort of products that you wouldn't even think are being used for fragrance, anything that has some sort of a smell to it is part of that, uh, you know, the, the broader spectrum of fragrance production. So one of those is the solid application. So things like, uh, you know, body creams and stuff like that. But there's also solid fragrances that you can wear on your own, you know, just as a, as a cologne. Um, so yeah, so really excited to check out a solid cologne. Uh, this is kind of my first dive into the solid fragrances um, because as you guys know, the ones that I make are usually ethanol based. And I think, you know, each kind of has their own pros and cons, right? So, you know, you're using ethanol, it's gonna have a little bit more projection in general, but at the same time, it's gonna be drying out your skin and uh, they won't usually last as long. Uh, if you guys have seen any of those kind of perfume hack videos where they tell you use some sort of a petroleum or some sort of a, a hand cream or a moisturizer to kind of give your, your perfume more longevity, this is sort of already built in uh, because this is a, a wax-based product. So it's gonna have a little bit longer lasting fragrances in general, but they're, they're gonna be a little less uh, beast mode, a little bit more office friendly. Um, and what's nice about these is they're very travel friendly. So if you wanna take them on the plane or whatever, or you wanna just take them, slip them into your pocket or into your gym bag or whatever, then it's really easy to have that in there and not really worry about busting uh, one of your glass bottles. So yeah, so we'll see. I'm, I've been really excited. I've actually heard a lot about uh, Fulton and Rourke and I know we were chatting kind of in the comments of one of the, uh, one of the recent videos that I posted. We were talking about solid fragrance. So. Speak of the devil, here we are, guys. Um, so yeah, so first let's check out the solid fragrance. Okay, so Mattia, i give it an open. It's a uh, pretty nice weight to it. It's a heavy metal, uh, it's all metal on the outside. Sort of like a lip balm type of container, okay? And then on the front it says Fulton and Rourke, and it has sort of an embossed uh, nice design to it with a a uh, bit of a thickness to the uh, to the packaging, which is nice. It says uh, salt, geranium, and black amber. Okay, so um, the nose behind this one, I had to do a little digging because again, this one is new, so it didn't have a Fragrantica page yet. Um, but this was actually made by Frank Vocal. Uh, so he did Glossier U. He did a bunch of the Le Labo fragrances. This guy is legit, and uh, he works for Ferme Niche. Um, so he's kind of one of the big two. Uh, fragrance companies. So I was excited to see they got a real, you know, name brand guy on there um, that's done a bunch of stuff. Um, and then this one's been getting a little bit of hype. Some of the other, yeah, uh, solid fragrances of theirs have been getting some hype on uh, places like, you know, Business Insider, or Men's Journal, or Vice. Uh, they've been featured in a couple of those articles. Um, Wall Street Journal, I believe, too. I was looking through their website, you know, I wanted to make sure I kind of had the background before I did a, a video for you guys on these sponsored products. Um, so yeah, so let's check it out. The notes are, yeah, salt, geranium, and black 
amber, whatever that means. Uh, I'm familiar with amber, but not really black amber. So on the front of it, it just has a kind of an imprinted F and R on there, and then it slides out to the side. Nice presentation, I will say. Uh, without smelling it even, it's a pretty good presentation. And then inside we have this sort of a, a waxy tray. Um, and you can remove the tray and put in a new tray. They have a little area for your finger to kind of pull out the tray. Here's the wax. And then I believe we're just supposed to kind of get some on there. And then you just put it on your wrist or you can put it on your neck. So however much you want. And I can smell it from here. So it actually has stronger projection than I thought. You know, I know I was telling you guys it's not going to have great projection. And it's, it's not beast mode, I would say moderate, maybe a little bit more intimate, but you can definitely smell it. It actually does come off of the wax and you can kind of use as much as you feel is appropriate. So let me just smell the, the container itself for this, for our purposes today. It's very fresh. There's a nice woodiness to it. Uh, it didn't say so in the, in the notes here, but, and I think I see what they're saying with the salt sort of a, um, an aquatic, not an aquatic, but a, um, ozonic sort of a saltiness to it. The geranium keeps it very masculine. Geranium is a nice masculine floral to use. And then black amber, I believe. So I think what they're doing is the amber gives it a little bit of sweetness, but, but they're adding wood. They're adding some sort of a, a, a woody component to it. Keeps it very masculine. I would say this is more of a, uh, a fall and a winter fragrance. Maybe you could get away with this in spring as well. It's fresh, so it's not too heavy or anything like that with the amber. And I would say it's very well balanced. So Frank, yeah, he, he did a good job. And I know that it can be tricky sometimes when you're working with a solid uh, base. I'm sure they, you know, if they specialize in it, they've obviously, they got it down. But for people like me who, who aren't as used to using a solid fragrance base, it can be tricky because some ingredients will push out and some of them don't, but these are actually blended quite well. Yeah, I really like that. I think I would give the, the, in the presentation probably a nine out of 10, because I, I really do like the presentation and, and the ability to move it around. The fragrance itself, maybe I would give an 8.5 or an 8.6 out of 10. So it's very pleasant. Yeah, I would definitely, actually I would definitely recommend this one. So salt, geranium, and black amber. I, I was reading a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the article where the perfumer was talking about it and he was saying that he used patchouli in it, which I definitely get because there, there really is some sort of a woodiness to it. Um, but they were using Indonesian patchouli, which is a, a dark patchouli. That's the same, actually the same exact type that I use. I source my patchouli from Indonesia as well. It seems like it's a richer, you know, a kind of a higher quality product, the Indonesian patchouli. So I'm glad they didn't, they, you know, they didn't really skimp on, uh, on the fragrance ingredients there. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, all right, yeah. So this is a uh, 0.2 ounces, which uh, I'm not sure how that would uh, go out to, as far as like what that would be in, in milliliter form if you had it as a, as a spray, but it seems like they give you a good amount. So maybe this is the equivalent of like a 50 milliliter? I, I'm not really sure. So let me know if you guys are, are uh, more well versed with that sort of a conversion uh, in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. So next, let's check out the soaps because the soaps, the minute I open the package, these actually have even more projection. These actually are kind of low key uh, beast mode. Maybe specifically the Palmetto one. Uh, Sterling is a little more subtle, a little creamier because it's tobacco, leather, and vanilla. It's called Sterling. And they're called trip, they're, they're triple milled soaps. So I guess that means they're kind of purified or something. Uh, these are all one ounces. So it's crafted for light exfoliation and a rich lather and for use with or without a washcloth. Okay. So let's unbox one of them. Let's open, unpackage one of them. And we'll check it out. 
So sterling, tobacco, leather, and vanilla. So inside, the bar itself actually has an imprint on it, which is quite nice. Okay, so I'm getting some sort of a smokiness to it. It says tobacco, leather, and vanilla, but I'm really, I'm getting some sort of a, a almost like a fur balsam reconstitution kind of a thing. A nice masculine, this is very, definitely very masculine leather. I get a lot of that vanilla, the sweet vanilla and the tobacco. It ties in quite nicely. So if you guys are a fan of, uh, you know, like Dolce & Gabbana, the one, that kind of a fragrance, this is gonna be kind of more of the one for you. Uh, so let's see how this one does on Fragrantica as far as uh, the performance and stuff. So I, I can only, I can't find the soaps, uh, but I can find the Sterling uh, solid fragrance on, uh, on Fragrantica, which I'm sure it's probably the same. Uh, so yeah, so leather, tobacco, vanilla, Let's see. Longevity, they're, they're saying uh, moderate to weak. I guess it is a soap. Um, and then the sillage is moderate to intimate. So, and then uh, let's see, price value is good. And then it reminds people of one of the John Varvedos, Dark Rebel. Okay, I could definitely see that because there's a woody kind of a smokiness to it. So yeah, definitely similar to that. I would say also similar to the one by Dolce & Gabbana. Not bad, I don't think it's my favorite. I think I like um, the, the number 15 a little better, the Matia. So let's check out Palmetto, okay? This one is Brazilian pepper, cedarwood, and magnolia, okay? So remember what I was saying about magnolia being a great floral to use when you're doing kind of the more um, masculine blends, right? It's a little bit more nuanced. People are starting to get into the magnolia a little more in recent years, I would say. So this is a little bit more uh, more nuanced, which is good. Uh, and then, yeah, Brazilian pepper and cedarwood. I can definitely already smell the cedarwood from when I open the package. So it's a nice cedar blend. Very woody, very, very woody. Very masculine. This one, uh, let's see, it has a Fragrantica. The, the solid perfume actually scores really well. It gets a 4.67 out of five on Fragrantica. So it's a woody floral musk fragrance for men. Okay. I'm not sure how much of the musk I get. I get the woodiness and the floral to it. This one is very pleasant. I think I like this Palmetto one more than the Sterling one. Although they're both pretty good. Yeah, it definitely has more projection, I will say, than the Sterling, uh, as far as soap projection goes. I don't know if that's a big deal for you guys. But this one, yeah, I would definitely give this fragrance probably a nine out of 10. This one is really well blended. Maybe even a little better than this one. But they, they also make a, a fragrance, a solid fragrance of this one and a solid fragrance of the Sterling as well. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know uh, Fulton & Rourke is kind of one of the more popular solid fragrance companies out there. Um, so tell me if you own any or if you're thinking about getting any. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments of solid fragrances if you've had any sort of an experience with them. Um, yeah, so, so thanks for watching guys. Huge shout out again to Fulton & Rourke for sending me these, uh, these products. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you guys in the next one. Take care.